Hello and welcome everyone. We have a very special guest, Dr. Mikhail Alonso. He's a leading expert in AI in finance, in quant investing and big data in asset management. He is right now the co-founder and chief science officer at AIFI, which is AI in Finance Institute. Thank you. Yes, yeah, you said, you know, this is a very, this is, I think, a unique time, moment, in, but probably humanity, not, not only finance. So obviously for finance, it's a unique moment. AI technologies will change uh, the way we work, the way we interact and also for humanity for society you know these new technologies uh, so it's very important to be on the top of how to responsibly uh, use these technologies what i really appreciate is that you are always looking at the sort of the forefront of all the research right so right now at llm but you've done research on reinforcement learning before and alternative data and you sort of cover Finance is is a, is kind of a science or a task in which it can be extrapolated to many human activities. So, so it's 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 uncertain. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. The technologies we use uh, have changed uh, dramatically. Uh, obviously, I'm 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 a little bit. I've been in the in the industry for many years, right? And I always playing the same anecdote. I started when Excel wasn't even right. Wow. Uh, it was, <laughs> was called Lotus 1, 2, 3, or even to do a full uh, a regression on, on four variables was taking three hours in a mainframe computer of the university. No, but it's really inspiring that you sort of from that to now you have been, you know, but to start off with, I'll, I'll maybe ask a little bit about your background. Like, how did you get excited about this? What sparked your interest in this? Yeah, I was born with, a, let's say, intellectual curiousness, you know, that has driven all, all, all my life so to speak in the sense that when i was 14 i was at home reading i was very interested in reading and acquiring experiences from from reading then uh, i had calling with science like saying okay i need to read and i have a library full of mathematics books i got my phd in mathematics when i was 40 and i for example i was in the in the new kind of science from stephen wolfram which is a summer school for very bright kids and i was there at 38 Right in 2008, I was I oh. was with Stephen Wolfram in Vermont, in the north of the U.S. And I was I, I, very inspired by Stephen because Stephen is a person. He's very brave, so to speak, in the right. sense that this is a, pl a place in which we can research and 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 so on. And and let's do it, regardless of the results or regardless if the other people right agrees with with the direction you know it's it's obviously something in which you need to be brave one of the things that people get wrong about innovation is many ideas will not be useful many ideas will will just be good ideas that never materialize in useful things but now we're seeing this technology like yeah. materializing in useful concrete applications I remember I was uh, talking to my team uh, for some implementation we are doing for a strategy and uh, they had many ideas and they were saying implementation will be difficult. I was like implementation is the easiest thing right now because you know you have these models now. So I remember Dr. Mikkel when we had met many years ago you have, were writing a book on deep learning and then we collaborated on reinforcement learning and since then you know you've written another book on I think portfolio optimization methods. I think you've written something on factor based portfolio optimization. Yeah we have now one book on artificial intelligence in finance oh. we also wrote a book on quantitative portfolio optimization what would you think that uh, you know how is the financial space going to transform in the next five to ten years all information digestion will be auto auto automated you're going to trust the machine to read in a matter of seconds right. and saying have you seen something you know bizarre right. or have you seen something very positive very negative and so on or, or what kind of issues might arise with these and so on much much faster obviously you know that requires a lot of work things weren't computationally ready for machines right so pdfs are built for humans you know in, in such a way they see a nice document with graphs and figures and mm -hmm. tables that looks nice and so on sometimes this is not the best format for machines to understand what's going on but i think in a matter of months all information will be digested by, by machines first and then it's like i think it's going to be like like doctors right so you probably have the diag the uh, first diagnose from the machine saying i think this person might have this or that or this person is i think it's it's, it's it's in in perfect health right mm -hmm. but you will have the decision right i am taking more more 
tests with this person? Uh, am I sending this to another doctor to see if, if she or he thinks uh, the same way I do, especially if there surgery or other things needed? I don't think LMMs will fool or, or AI will fully replace a credit, a credit committee, but certainly it's, it's going to do the 80% of the heavy lifting. Right, right, right. No, I think that's a great use case. So I think... Uh... I think they call it vertical AI, right? Which is finding use cases of AI in different domains. What we have discovered lately is that these models are obviously very expensive to train. You know, you were talking about how LLMs are amazing, but maybe specifically for financial application, for example, a portfolio optimization and stuff like that, it might not be suitable, right? So what are the challenges of such models in, in financial yeah, market? So, so finance was a numbers thing, right? Is a numbers thing, right, to some extent. So the mm -hmm. fact that companies, you know, put together financial statements and, and balance sheets and, and we look at the returns and the price and all that stuff, these are numbers, right? And we have a long tradition of trying to model this and we know how hard it is. There's a, a relatively high uh, uh, uncertainty over uh, Apple revenues in 2027, right? Mm -hmm. So not even Tim Cook knows exactly right the revenues of apple right uh, and even lesser returns of apple in 2027 or 2028 so it, this is a it's like a little bit like sports right yeah. like we have a football game and there's uncertainty of this is not going to change right otherwise it doesn't make sense to play them right if you play a game in which you already have a, 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 an equation to solve it, so what's the point? So it has to be an interesting game. Certainly, finance is an interesting game because there's a lot of uncertainty over over these things. Okay, now how can I navigate this certainty? You is like by trying to understand the situation of the enter of the company by reading, by looking at ratios, and obviously LMMs can do that. So that's one, right? In, uh, then we uh, LMMs can also be used to generate scenarios. In finance, some people says we don't like uh, you know artificial scenarios, but we're doing that all the time in the sense that now we're all thinking about, for example, how tariffs are going to impact U.S. companies. Uh, everybody in the plan is trying to figure out how are they going to impact, uh, okay. you know, U.S. companies in the in the S&P and, and Nasdaq and Russell and so on. So I remember vividly, right, once that we have a black a Robert Litterman and he oh. said something that everybody needs to have, uh, you know, many problems we're trying to solve are, are, are looking forward problems right mm -hmm. things that have never even happened scenarios that have never we have never explored then uh, obviously you know uh, lmms can help us do mathematics uh, can help us do coding in order to do some of the essential tasks that ones and fundament even f also fundamental managers are also you know using them heavily in the sense that read that give me your opinion and on the con side reading documents is tough reading tables is tough it's not easy to get the elements do all these tasks with absolute precision in terms of research i remember we did something on overfitting of financial models right how overfitting might be a solution right? instead of bias variance trade off we thought that it has it has a W curve, right? right. That's why you need skilled users, right? Oftentimes when, when the LMM is not aware, I think LMMs are starting to be more and more aware of, I'm giving you the results of the Man Human City, but but be aware that mm. that these things cannot be predicted with precision. So so don't yeah. bet all your ranch on what I'm, whatever I'm saying yeah. about the result of uh, Man Human City or the revenues of Apple next right. year but like these predictive models i was reading somewhere that uh, you know financial markets are second order chaotic what that means is that if i knew that uh, you know if everybody could predict that apple stock price is going to go from 100 to 150 we'll all buy it today and the price will go to 150 today it will not go to 150 a month later right so your predictions will become wrong if you could predict the future that's also yeah. well, obviously there's feedback effects yes of course yeah yeah that's a good point right there would eventually be feed feedback effects in the fact that you know uh, other no, if if that happens what the market would do if mm -hmm. it says you know this element has precision right so it will get to the price in a matter of seconds because everybody right. will push in that direction we have always a lot of questions about how the ecology of the market is going to change and this is a, th a thing that everybody needs to pay close attention to to what extent this is going to concentrate the market so in the yeah. course we're basically uh, that starts the uh, 10th of march right the next cohort uh, what we do is we go through, uh, you know, all important steps 
you've also witnessed the developments of NLP in finance. So mm-hmm. of in, at the beginning, in 2017, people was, was uh, using algorithms that were more based on frequencies and so on, trying to say, you know, Elon has said more positive words than negative words, and okay. it means that he seems to be positive about, I don't know, going to Mars and so on. And we develop algorithms that were doing that, right, in the computing sentiment, right? The sentiment is a tone or... or of a, of a text or, or of a conference call or earnings call and so on. For example, uh, see, if you ask an LLM which stock is going to work, it's going to give you disclaimers, right? Like in a general sense. But even if you, like for example, if I ask it about a strategy to build, right? What I've seen is it, it also gives you disclaimers, right? Even then, until unless you ask it very, very specific, it's still giving you very vague. And I think- we, we've all gone through phases on, on which We've said, oh, try, oh, prompting is very important. Then you say, oh, it's not that important. I can type loosely and still understands me. Let me deep dive on the question you asked. What's the best stock for next quarter? You can't ask questions like that to an LMM. What can likely happen, right, is that the LMM goes and says, I'm going to go to internet. Yeah. I found an article from whatever person has written saying, this, are the, this, will, this will be the best performing stocks. Okay, the machine has provided an answer. Again, this is what I said before, that you, you shouldn't normally trust one-shot answers because they're not well cooked, right? So it will oftentimes not be a good answer. It's going to pick somebody else's opinion about, uh, about the market which you're not interested, right? right. So every time that you ask difficult questions right in reality you what you need to do is a much better prompt like saying i want you first go to look at uh, i don't know what happened last quarter with returns what happened last year with the returns was this a good performing now look at the valuation ratios is mm. does it seem expensive cheap and so on now look at sentiment so prompting is is essential in this kind of tasks in which otherwise the question the answers of the element can be all over the place so agents are very important so that's that's one thing i wanted to say artificial agents will be that's that's uh, so we also speak uh, and teach about agents and here we wrote a paper about this look ahead bias some people from chicago wrote papers saying LMMs are better than humans in picking mm. stocks. And at, yeah. after some, they say, you say, this is all look-ahead bias. You can't ask uh, an LMM about 2010 thinking that you're not going to have look-ahead bias, right? Right. You cannot... The whole data, right? To go a little bit off topic here, I was... Uh... I was part of this lecture course by uh, some professor at Stanford University in their program, right? And what they, like, they did a research, more behavioral research, where they proved that in many of the decision-making that these companies do, emotions are the biggest part, more than the rational decision making so how will a machine sort of predict that aspect the machine inherits biases so if if, if the machine is asked to be a cfo right mm. you're probably writing a similar style right? right when you see a balance sheet you're writing a similar style and there's always the question of inheriting these biases good or bad but certainly a cfo if you ask the machine to write and it doesn't have similar biases it, w- it wouldn't look natural so some people is asking the LMMs and say, now humanize this. It's very funny, right? Some people is saying, now humanize that for me. It's like you provided a very formal answer. I want you to be a little bit more human, right? right. And you kind of inherit these biases that if you're selling something, you're, you're kind of need to, to to show you know obviously a positive attitude versus the topic you need to be well presented and so and, and all this kind of stuff so so we talk a lot about the course i want to quickly talk about the work that you do at eifi also i've been part of a couple of boot camps so you guys are still uh, you're doing that offline right now right i think during covid it was all online. yeah we offer uh, we we offer uh, a more general ai course mm-hmm. uh, this, uh, on the 17th oh, march wow starts and i think this is where you should start even before thinking about lmms but you need a lot of expertise so for example when i work with let's say interns or people it, what you would see is that they've all gone to chat gpt or they've all gone to uh, an llm to build their system but many a time you know they will have some very very uh, glaring look ahead bias that you know the machine has not spotted. absolutely or just very trivial answers that are not interesting or useful Definitely. That makes a lot of sense. I think you've sort of demystified the whole concept to a lot of people who 
might want to know how LLMs and how AI is going to transform uh, investing. So we we covered uh, quite a bit of it. I know it's very early morning for you. And I no, no, no problem, no problem. Uh, I think in a lot of your time, I think this was an amazing uh, conversation. I sort of learned so much. Uh, the real world examples and, you know, the key challenges and how you can actually leverage these things to do so much more. I think this is extremely useful. Thank you so much. This was amazing. It was great talking to you. Investment in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing.